So, Dropity, we've already been on quite an adventure. We've, we've been to some workshops with Hari, we've done medicine together, we've seen a similar teacher in the, in the Amazon, in the Amazon, in the Sonora. In Sonora, yeah. So, let's, let's start off with, like, the sustainability of the, of the, of the toad medicine, because we've seen that it's, uh, it's getting hammered at the moment. And I just want want to get from you what you feel about um, just what's going on with the toad collecting at the moment and how we can improve on that. Mm. Well, it's a huge thing, isn't it? And what's happening, for, as we see, it's like Rat calls it the game of toads. It's gold. It's gold has struck the Sonora. And, of course, it's affecting all of the villagers there, all of the tribal people, or, you know, everyone is suddenly from a life of maybe hundreds of years of poverty has now got a way out of that poverty by making big money with this medicine. And because the medicine is spreading so fast, that's why obviously it's so important. And I don't really know the solution to it, but I, I feel that one of the things that can really help these sacred beings in this time is to make some little short movies that can be posted on the toad page on other sent to other people so it's like a a, very, a, a small very succinct clip on this disease I can't actually mm. remember what the disease yeah. is called uh, that the toads are contracting quite possibly because of handling um, that that is then killing the toads mm. because when it spreads amongst them and they then no longer are able to breathe through their skin, it's it's killing them. Um, so can you let's let's do one now, okay? Um, so what is your message? You've been to the Sonora, you've seen some of the collection techniques at the moment. Mm -hmm. What do you think is happening with with the collection process and how can it be improved? Well, I think spreading awareness and I think also to support the people that are being paid by some of the very big collectors, a very small amount to just hand, catch toads and hand them over, to actually go to all of those villages and um, educate them and offer them something. Because I know there was some talk last year about tithing. Um, an amount of money from all of the practitioners that there was some money being tithed whether that could be put in a pot that was supporting villagers to perhaps not collect for some of the big collectors that are not collecting ethically hmm. so they're getting an amount to and also education so tell us some of the problems about the we'll call it unethical collection and what have, what have you seen because you've you've been there and you've witnessed mm -hmm. it firsthand mm -hmm. How, how can that, what did you see and, and what can be improved? Mm. Well, what, what I saw obviously was coming from it, my place of ignorance at the time, two years ago, on not knowing that the toads have a homing signal and when they're driven a long way away from where they were connect, collected, that they will go back to where they were born. I had no idea about that. And... Um, you know, that they're being gathered by villagers and paid per toad in sacks of 40. Um, and then they're being then loaded in a truck and taken somewhere else to, and then released there after they are milked. So that could be a long way away. So, uh, uh, so the danger could be that the toad actually dies of exhaustion trying to get back to their yeah. home place. and it's just for and traumatized you yeah. know and that's that's really the essence of it as well it's like all, all animals are sacred but these animals have come in my opinion with a contract in this time where we're an awakening species and in our soul's evolution that they've come with this big message to help us to become enlightened human beings but I also believe that the stages of that uh, in however many times we've incarnated on this planet is at the stage of whether we do receive enlightenment from taking this medicine and what we do with that afterwards. So that's where I see there's a, a big glitch in many of the beings that are now experiencing this medicine are not 
getting that enlightenment because they're not putting that into practice of living in non-harm and utter respect of all living things and of these incredible sacred beings that are giving us the tool to receive enlightenment. Mm. So I guess one of the ways would be to know the source, you know, know where it's coming from, if it's being collected ethically or not. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, um, you know, what do you imagine as being a, 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 an ethical collection of the of the the toe? Can anyone just go and do it? No, no. I think that's part of the big problem, is because it's become this huge phenomenon. And so many people are now, you know, wanting this, as we can see, um, and then thinking, oh, right, okay, let's just go to the desert and get our own toads without the education. So I feel, you know, by setting things up to educate people, that there's no way of stopping people, mm. you know, is mm. there? There's no way of actually saying, okay, you've now received the download that we are all one, you know, that life is eternal, our souls are internal, but you can't go and collect yeah. medicine yourself. Well, I guess the education is, is uh, you know, having the respect for the type, but also um, allowing some people who, I guess, could be seen as the guardians, the people who live in that area, to you know, show them how to you know, respectfully handle the toads. You know, yeah. I guess that's where the whole fair trade toad yeah. push is, is coming from. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> just trying to think, what what were we talking about the other day that we needed to get um, that we wanted to cover? Well, we were talking about you know, over the millennium, there's been mystery schools that yes. have been these sacred schools where only certain people would be invited in to be initiated. Mm. And there would be years of initiations before they even got to take the sacred sacrament, like mm. the Zoroastrians and the Egyptians and the Sumerians, you know, and all of these great cultures. Um, there would have been a long, long teaching of many, many mysteries before they would be given a sacrament that would then open them up because they would have already done all these different stages mm. of, of the ability to become enlightened human beings. Mm. And then even once they'd taken the sacrament, it was like by pain of death that they told anyone else about this. So it wasn't for, you know, I don't like using the term the common people, but you know, that's it's not what it's not for everyone. Yeah. You know, it's not for everyone. And the thing is, because we're living in this Aquarian age now where we can just push a button and get absolutely everything we want, just like that, mm. that this is where the, the glitch has come in because now everyone can receive this incredible gift without the, all of the stages mm. that a soul may need to fully receive the gift of this. So talking about the stages, you, you work with Kundalini yoga mm -hmm. and stuff, so mm. you know, what do you see as happening when you um, have the toad medicine in relation to the, the, the chakra systems or, or whatever, and what are the dangers involved for those who aren't oh, uh, ready yeah. or prepared? Mm. Well, you know, I, I always recommend Kundalini yoga because it's a, an incredible technology that works super fast in this, it's the Aquarian yoga system basically and what it does like with the the medicine the medicine awakens the kundalini and if someone ha isn't actually actively working to direct the kundalini up the shushumna that cleans the chakra system and spins the chakras in the right direction clears them and then builds the torus so that the energy can flow then often the energy will just kind of go wild in the bottom three chakras and this is what most of humanity is suffering from is being stuck at without being able to have that channel clear where everything then goes through the heart and the bottom three chakras rule uh, greed lust anger greed you know and all the violations are coming from nations around the planet that are stuck in the lower three chakras and so that's where we also get the greed of the power to have this sacred sacrament and earn lots of money from it and that's 
in my opinion, where one of the big casualties is mm. coming from. So Kundalini Yoga would be a good integration tool. And what happens for Wonderful. those people who who don't have that? I mean, they get trapped here, but what are some of the casualties too in, in, in other areas you've seen with people who haven't integrated this energy? Yeah, yeah, because the Kundalini then gets blasted open and it's it hasn't got a container up and down the spine to work in a channel. It's like... You know, it's like trying to pour water down a pipe that's got all these blockages in. Mm. So it comes out in different ways or it bursts. Mm. And, you know, a Kundalini, uh, if you have a Kundalini awakening and it's not, there's no understanding around what happens, you can have a Kundalini burnout and people get traumatized from Kundalini mm. burnouts. Mm. So can you explain, in like having some experience with working with the chakras and Kundalini, can you actually see what happens when you take toad, like in relation to ship to the, um, the, the chakra system, and, and what happens to people in their chakra systems when they do take a toad? Take a toad? Well, you know, I would definitely recommend that some of the doses that are being given are way beyond what's necessary. Um, and when the very large doses get taken, there's this huge surge of Kundalini that can give like the cos cosmic orgasm that, you know, awakens every cell in the body. But then when there's no skill and guidance to integrate that, that's when the person may come back and have not a clue how to channel this energy in a positive way where it's going to support their creative energy and where the doors are going to be opening into their lives to better their lives. So that's when, when trauma occurs and it takes possibly months to, to integrate. Mm. Mm. So do you think like, when you take the toad, do you see, uh, do, you, do you feel like that's a an opening of a chakra or, or a blasting of the kundalini or how would you relate yeah. the actual experience of, of the toad in relation to, to, to the kundalini to the, well the kundalini rises it wakens up and it rises and and you know in that it does clear blockages hmm. in the chakra system hmm. and is a huge connection with all of the chakras to go through the heart that's why you know when you come back from a toad it's like you just love everything and everyone because that energy is going through the heart mm. um, but that needs to be refined and worked on you know to refine it and working on it by doing a practice so I would always recommend to do the Sat Kriya and I always recommend that as part of the the integration is to start with just three days three three minutes a day Sat Kriya to try and get along to your Kundalini class once a week you know lots of meditation practices mm. afterwards mm. you know that maybe you someone may may <coughs> never even thought of doing mm. okay so just for editing processes what i'd love you to do is, is, is sort of like put my question into the answer a bit like so when i say if you just start off with like when you take the toad this happens so I, you know so i can just edit that straight in so if i can ask you that again and just if you can explain to just say, well, when you take the toad, there's an energy rush up the Kundalini and blah, 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 or whatever, whatever it happens. But if we can just do that question, you can, okay, so what happens when you take the toad? Well, this is just my perception yeah. also. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's like, uh, so my perception of what happens when we take the toad medicine yeah. is it wakes up the Kundalini which is at the base of the spine and the kundalini then rushes up the spine through all of the chakras clearing the chakras or not but that's what i experience and rushes through the heart you know which is what if all of our chakras are connected and working in a, a good way so that the kundalini can really rise and come round and work in this torus way then we're we're clearing all of our systems we're clearing our Nadi system, which is 72 uh, energy lines, it's like Grand Central, in two fingers below the belly button, and the Nadis, you know, this is these these energy lines are like our motorway, our internal motorway, that get blocked through traumas, get blocked through terrible things, posture also, you know, and the medicine also clears that, but we have to maintain it. Mm. 
Mm. You know, we can't just go, right, this is the pill, boom. You know, we have to work at, at continuing to clear us. It's mm. a life, it's a life mm. commitment. So what happens when someone takes the, the, the toad, the kundalini starts rising, it hits like a massive block of when their parents abuse them or something or other and then they just can't deal with it and it just, what happens? They, they pop, well, they if they, if they hit, hit a, a block or a trauma, in my experience, often that will be seen and recognised or felt on some very deep level. So there'll be a forgiveness in that and in that it will clear yeah. I mean I've spoken to many people that have blocks here that mm. haven't been able to sing and after toad medicine they've suddenly found their voice mm. so that's not guarantee that it's going to clear but that's mm. to, 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 that to work on the clearing yeah. then there's the, the process afterwards of working with the, mm. the, the chakra energy kundalini system to yeah. help clear that um, energy yeah. system yeah well, to make that a commitment. Yeah. And toad can be a part of that process of cleansing, so you mm. can use it more than once. Yeah. If needed. Yeah. 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 And so there's a, I guess a, there'd need to be some sort of commitment on the initiate side that they see this is just one part of the process, and then there's mm. like a ongoing integration working process mm. to, to mm. do. Yeah, so it's an initial deep, deep activation to your inner consciousness and the clearing of the internal systems and your light bodies, your energy bodies. But the commitment would be to like, you know, why, why does anyone take this medicine? You know, do you want to be an enlightened person? Do you want to be on this planet fully? So I also understand that this medicine has really come to help us to be fully embodied here and now so that we can be active members of being alive on this planet so we can be aligned with what your sole purpose is rather than endeavoring all the time oh, I want to do that I want to do this that it all just magnetically becomes aligned as to what we're meant to be doing but to be fully here and now so it really concerns me when I hear about people who take this medicine a lot because I feel I personally feel that there's kind of can be a propensity to be out there so have a peak experiencing so rather than uh, grounding than, it than bringing it here yeah. it's yeah. about being here and now yeah. to whatever that is whether we're sacred activists or you know to bring beauty to bring love to bring healing mm. to these times that we're we're mm. living in because mm. we're needed on board all of us mm. So do you see the toad coming in now as a way of us accessing, clearing, accessing our power and strength to bring about the change that's needed? Yeah. 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 And to yeah. walk our talk yeah. in that way, yeah. you know, to be fully activated yeah. in that. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you feel? Like, are you feeling optimistic about what's going on with the, with the toad and the way it's coming in to consciousness at the moment?